everyone my name is Deeksha Jain and I secured rank 22 in civil services examination 2018. Uh, in this video I will be talking about chapter 11 of the economic survey which is titled redesigning a minimum wage system in India for inclusive growth. So firstly going into the historical background which was given by the economic survey minimum wage actually finds a historical mention in Arthashastra of the uh, 2nd century BC where both government servants as well as private workers were to be given a minimum wage of 60 panas and uh, recent studies have shown that uh, minimum wage can promote social justice without any major negative implications on the economy which is basically saying that it does not mean that if you increase minimum wages then the economy can go down because of rising wages so studies have shown that there is no such relationship therefore with 93 percent workers in the informal economy in india if we have a well-designed, uh, well-implemented minimum wage system, it can reduce inequalities of income, it can bridge gender gaps in wages, which is very high in India, and it can also alleviate poverty. So, let us first look at the minimum wage system in India. India was one of the first countries to introduce a minimum wages law, uh, the Minimum Wages Act, way back in 1948. It covered both uh, regular and casual workers. Minimum wages in India are set by both the central government as well as the state government and they are all basically they have a certain list of scheduled employees which are included in this minimum wage system. Uh, in 1992, the Supreme Court of India ruled that minimum wage should also be keeping in account aspects such as children's education, medical requirements etc. In 1996, the government adopted for the first time a non-statutory national floor level minimum wage Basically, what it means is that it was a floor level minimum wage for the entire nation on top of which the state can increase their own minimum wage as per the requirements of their own state and, and the living expenses of that particular state. So the uh, NFLMW, which is the floor wage, has been uh, increasing over the years according uh, by incorporating inflation and all. And in 2017, it was rupees 176 per day. So there is also the idea of having a national level minimum wage and the problem with implementing such an idea in India are the existence of wide disparities in economic development and large variation in cost of living across the states. So it is very difficult to have a single minimum wage across the country. So uh, anyways, we it has been 70 years since independence, more than 70 years and uh, we have had a very good economic growth but despite that minimum wage has not been properly implemented in India and we have not been able to function uh, work towards an inclusive growth as we would have wanted to and uh, minimum wage can actually help us in driving the economic growth it can increase the aggregate demand it can strengthen the middle class and it can reduce the income inequalities now the problems with the current minimum wage system as it exists in India the first is extreme complexities. We have 1915 minimum wages defined in different uh, various schedules and various laws of India. And there are different categories for job and jobs and skilled and unskilled. So it leads to a lot of variability. Variability is also there because of interstate differences. So for example, the highest minimum wages is there in Kerala, which is 905, and it is 16 in Nagaland. So there is a lot of interstate variability. Second problem is that despite this complex structure, there are a lot of loopholes in minimum wage, which means that people are not covered by this minimum wage. One in every three wage earners is actually not covered under the minimum wage law. So these people don't have social security and their wages are, they don't have a bargaining power on, on the basis of minimum wage. So anyways, let us now talk about the steps that have been taken by India. Uh, the national level floor wage we have already spoken about. Uh, there has been a strengthening of coordination of the central advisory body and the state advisory body to strengthen the minimum wage implementation. Uh, the states have also been promoted to determine minimum wage uh, rates through consultation with different sections and with different uh, stakeholders in this uh, approach by broader regional committees and also district committees. Now, uh, another uh, important issue uh, that uh, this uh, economic survey raises the gender di disparity in minimum wage and what it is saying is that there is a systemic discrimination built into the law and how does this happen so basically for example women dominate in the category of domestic workers and uh, within this category uh, security guards are also there so men dominate in as security guards and women are dominating as domestic workers 
while both these uh, occupations fall within unskilled labor the disparity between the wages of these two uh, categories is very high and it varies across state so women within the system itself women are getting less paid for unskilled labor they are getting very much less paid for unskilled labor than their male counterparts are getting paid uh, now if we talk about compliance of the minimum wage law it has not been very good uh, because the law is very complex it is uh, people don't really know about the minimum wage law so it is difficult to implement it as they don't come with their grievances uh, there are different statutory minimum wages in different states so what happens is if in state a the wages are less and in state b the wages are high then the industries tend to migrate from state b to state a so there is a need to curb that tendency also so that the industry does not migrate however uh, one uh, good thing about the minimum wage law in india is that it has shown a lighthouse effect according to the economic survey in some areas now what is a lighthouse effect it basically means that even though minimum wage is not being implemented properly but it pulls the overall wage and it gives more bargaining power to the workers so it sort of acts as a benchmark which pulls the wage even if they are not up to the mark as per the minimum wage and the vulnerable workers are, do get some benefit out of having a minimum wage so again one more point that i would like to mention is that if we actually are able to implement the minimum wage properly and if we have a less complex more simplified system then one of the biggest beneficiaries would be vulnerable section and women because they dominate in the unskilled and the unorganized sector and if their wages come with uh, in parity with the uh, other sections of the society then the income inequality will definitely reduce and they will be economically empowered now uh, the economics survey talks about way forward that what is it that we can do to improve the minimum wage scenario in india the first thing is simplification and rationalization the complex web of laws and categories that is there in minimum wage system in india needs to be simplified and one of the a uh, good things that can be done and which is also uh, you know it is on the charts is the code of wages bill because it a uh, sort of consolidates all these diverse lots into four codes of wages so that can a uh, four labor codes so that can really lead to a simplification of wage laws the second thing that we can have is a national floor level wage which we already have but we can divide it as per four regions so instead of having a different wage uh, form for every state we can have it for only four regions so this will create some sense of uniformity across the country and that migration of industries that i spoke about a few minutes ago that will be curtailed uh the third is the criteria for setting minimum wage so it should consider fixing the minimum wages based on number 1 the skilled category and the unskilled category and the geographical region or both of these categories can be taken into account but it should not have the diversification of uh, categories of uh, labor that it has right now just for simplification number 4 is coverage as i said earlier that one in three people are excluded uh, from the minimum wage law so we should focus on uh, universal coverage under the minimum wage law uh, number 5 is regular adjustment a mechanism should be developed that minimum wage can be adjusted as per inflation as per uh, different requirements and different uh, stakeholders uh, considerations and we can develop technology for uh, similar to countries like montenegro nicaragua netherlands etc the role of technology in this is also very central if we use more technology we can have a central dashboard where every state uh, can uh, lock in their experiences of minimum wages how many the statistics related to minimum wages its implementation so we can have a data which can focus on better policy making and better implementation apart from that we can also have uh, number 7 which is grievance redressal there should be an easy to remember toll free number where anybody who is not being paid the minimum wage can talk and uh, register their grievances so what this will do is that it will empower people and it will uh, make sure that the implementation is done properly uh finally the economics survey also talks about some international examples i will be mentioning two or three and the rest will be there in the slide for example in uae all enterprises are legally required to pay their wages both uh, whether uh, their nationals or migrant uh, workers through banks and um, other financial service providers so there is a lot of transparency in who is being paid what so they cannot uh, escape the minimum wage laws uh in us there is an app called the wage and hour guide for employees app it puts federal and state wage uh, hour laws at the fingertips of the employers 
so that there is no confusion regarding the laws and there are other grievance redressal mechanisms in south africa as well so we can learn from these international examples and there are other measures suggested in the economic survey itself to improve minimum wage which will help in taking the economy forward and making the society socially equitable thank you subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon to get latest updates on upcoming videos